Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the first church service of these studies. We welcome all that are willing to come, and we are most happy for those that will view these studies later. Now, in keeping with the schedule that has been laid out, this will be a shortened study. And then we will be having a sermon service after this study. So as we proceed, shall we ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance to assist us so that we may truly come into a closer walk with him and into an understanding of that which he is presenting before us. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we ask, Father, that our minds may be open to understand that which you are presenting before us. As we open your word and the words of your prophet, we ask for your direction and for your blessing, that we may truly understand that which is being given before us. Forgive us of our sins. Help us now, Father, to be ready to understand that which you would have us to know at this time. We thank you for those that are joining with us, for those that will join later. Direct us now. Help us that we may be able to understand, to learn, to participate. Be with us. May your angels attend us. May your spirit call to our minds that which we need to know. Help us, Father. For this we ask, for this we thank you, and for this we praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay. Now, last week, we had quite a, a session. I'm going to ask whether or not any accepted my challenge to consider carefully that which we had studied this last week. I'm also going to ask that you make use of your symbolic understandings of so many things that we had covered this last week. As this is to be a Sabbath school, this is going to be a time for participation. It's going to be a time for conversation to see if what is presented is understood and if this is something that we can accept. Now, before you, we are again going to cover from manuscript 89 of 1897, several paragraphs. As Mrs. White wrote, hard work will reveal itself in actions. Those who appreciate truth and righteousness will show by their zeal, by their efforts to give light to others. How important then is that? How important is it for us to show our zeal and to provide light to others? Probably the most important. Okay. How are we to proceed then when light being given to others is rejected?
Well, not get not get angry at them for one. Okay. Not be angry and resentful and all those carnal emotions, you know. All right, very good. Paul said to Timothy, take heed to thyself and to thy doctrine. Those who are chosen vessels must reflect the character of Christ. Through these, the grace of Christ flows in rich, pure streams from the rivers of the water of life, enabling them to bless all with whom they come in contact. So here we are today. We are given instruction that we are to reflect the character of Christ. Symbolically, what does that make us? If we are reflecting the light of the sun, what, what are we? A mirror. Agreed. What else? We're stones, ain't we? Okay. What what reflects the light of the sun? Well, the moon. Thank you. Yours does too, but we're looking at the moon. From exactly. Our so now, since we've looked at this symbolically, let us consider carefully that Mrs. White has written the following. Golden instruction is given us in the fourth chapter of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 1 to 6 and 12 to 14. The angel that talked with me, the prophet writes, came again and waked me as a man wakened out of his sleep. How many different times in scripture were prophets or parties awakened out of their sleep? Seven. Well, to my mind, I see Jeremiah thirty one twenty six, Daniel eight eighteen, Daniel ten eight through ten, and then different passages in the New Testament. And there may be a lot more. And the angel said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick of gold with a bowl on top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are on the top thereof and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me saying, what are these, my Lord? Did Zechariah understand what these olive trees were? Did he understand what these olive trees were representing? Not at that point. That's why he asked. Okay. And the angel that talked with, then the angel that talked with me answered and said, Knowest thou not, well, not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, meaning what? What does Zerubbabel mean for us? Mm 
born in the midst of confusion or born born in Babylon or out of Babylon is the meaning of his name. Okay. Brothers and sisters, aren't many of us come out of confusion? What is Zechariah representing here? Because as this continues, and I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches through the golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, knowest not what these be. And I said, no, my Lord. Then said he, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now here we have a very brief synopsis of the entire chapter of Zechariah 4. What are these two anointed ones that stand before the Lord of the whole earth? Are these Moses and Elijah? It's the Old and the New Testament. Okay, Old and New Testament is one way of looking at it. Now, Ellen White says that they, when, well, in reference to Revelation uh, chapter, chapter 11, right? Um, okay. Where it talks about this, that's the chapter, correct? Go ahead. Um, well, she says it's the Old and New Testament. So if this is the same symbol, it would be the same thing. Okay, now as, we, as we're going to go in this case, in this case, we would say the law and the prophets, just because it's the Old Testament times, um, right? All right. So, so you could equate it with Moses and Elijah, in that, you know, Elijah represents the prophets, and Moses represents the law. Okay. In this manuscript, as we continue, we are now making the application of law and the prophets. We are making the application of the Old and the New Testament. And we have witnesses that are providing this. Now, in our studies with this, my question was asked, is this representational of Elijah and Moses? Could we make that application? I think we could, but it's more than that. I mean, they, they did come to Christ, you know, at one point, but I think it's more than just those two people. Okay. Well, and, and even then, Moses and Elijah, when they come to Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, they they represent the law and the prophets, but also uh, those that are going to be translated without seeing death and those that are going to be resurrected. So the righteous... Uh, dead and the final generation all right as she continued there is a work for all to do for the master does this mean that only pastors are to do this work We all no. are to do this work. All right. Every human being who has a vital connection with Christ will earnestly strive to carry forward the work committed to him. How specific is this? 
that every human being who has a vital connection with Christ is going to look to carry forward this work. Does it say that every cat, every Again? elephant... Yeah. What time is it? Okay. But no selfish but no selfishness can enter God's service. The most splendid service, if it originates with self, is useless. Unless the root is holy, no fruit can be born to God's glory. We are to be justified by faith and judged by works. Now, how does this track with what we understood in last night's meeting? Is this in agreement with what we were studying last night? And to answer the question from the chat, yes, we're more than willing to have questions throughout this because this is Sabbath school. Yes, please. Uh, thank you so much, brother. Uh, my question goes to the the previous paragraph twelve, where you where we read the two anointed ones. You asked, and the, there were various questions. So my my concern is still what's the right answer for that? What are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth? Thank sister, you. sister, we're going to be coming to that as far as as far as another answer for this in just a moment. So as what, what I'm doing right now is I'm laying a groundwork because this last week we had a session where we were covering all of these manuscripts and articles that Mrs. White had written. So bear with me for a moment. We are attempting, as the Millerites did, to examine all possible answers to see what answer fits the best for what we are studying in now. So we have, we have now put forth that these two anointed ones can be the Old and the New Testament. We have put forth that this can be the law and the prophets. We have asked the question if this is Moses and Elijah. Because it's being said that Moses and Elijah can be these two anointed ones. But we are using scripture and we are using the spirit of prophecy together to examine these answers. Does that help with your understanding of where we're going? Well, well, thank you. Okay. We are to be justified by faith. We are to be judged by works. God's law claims obedience from all and condemns disobedience. Is this point clear for all of us to understand? Are we to be obedient to God's law? What say you? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Of course. The Lord has a people on the earth who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. In the visions of Sister White, who are these people? The 144,000. Amen. 
Does anybody have a disagreement with that? Well, so, me. okay. If the Lord has a people on the earth who follow the lamb, whithersoever he goeth, these are the 144,000. Who represents in Bible history the 144,000? Well, you could say Elijah. You could also say Enoch. But... Okay. I would agree with both. He has his thousands who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Such will stand on Mount Zion. But first they must stand on earth, girded with the whole armor, ready to engage in the work of saving those who are ready to perish. Hunting for lost sheep. Heavenly angels conduct this search. And spiritual activity is demanded of all who believe present truth that they may join the angels in their work. Is this spiritual activity requested? Is it just to be happenstance? No, it is to be demanded of all who what? Believe present truth. Now, since this was written in 1897, Mrs. White is making a comment for us. Now, for those that are able to do so, we will now refer to the Review and Herald of 20th of July, 1897. We're going to be putting some of this on the screen in just a second. So the Review and Herald, July 20th, 1897, beginning in paragraph five. The oil with which the wise virgins filled their lamp represents the Holy Spirit. This is a statement. This golden oil is what is given, is provided by these two olive trees. Here again, the entirety of the book of Zechariah 4 is now to be repeated. So Zechariah was wakened by the angel that talked with him. Zechariah is representing the wise virgins. Can we see this in Zechariah 4? Would we agree? Yes, with I this? can. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Amen. Now, Zechariah has asked, And I said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? Do you recall us addressing this this last week? Did you consider this portion of it that here these olive trees are? One on the right, one on the left. They are filling the golden bowl the golden bowls, the pure golden bowls. And the angel 
said, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now, the next paragraph was very direct and very telling. The anointed ones standing by the Lord of the whole earth have the position once given to Satan as covering cherub. What does this mean to you? Where do we find the covering cherubs? On the Ark of the Covenant. On the Ark of the Covenant is correct. Okay. We have a question, so please ask your question. I was just answering. Okay. So if these two anointed ones standing by the Lord have the position once given to Satan as covering cherub, what are we looking at? And what are we looking toward? This is all symbolic for us. Are Moses and Elijah appointed as covering cherubs? It could be. Who was the angel that took the place of Lucifer? Gabriel. Gabriel. So if Gabriel took the place of covering cherub, then, and as Gabriel is the one that brings light to the prophets, as we were addressing, because how does it say about Gabriel in Revelation 1? As we were addressing this last week. Um, there he's called God's servants. He spoke with John. Right. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Consider this symbolically. The covering cherubs are upon the Ark of the Covenant, right? Right. What is there between the covering cherubs? The mercy seat. Exactly. Who is it that looks upon the mercy seat? How do we see the mercy seat? The only way that we can see the mercy seat is if we have the character of Christ, if we have a pure character. Who will be those that follow the Lamb wherever 
he goeth. Did we not just establish that that's the 144,000? All right, the premise that I'm I'm attempting us to consider. Here are these anointed ones that stand be by the Lord of the whole earth. These anointed ones are providing the golden oil which represent the grace with which God keeps the lamps of believers supplied that they should not flicker or go out. This oil, these burning lamps, burning in the golden bowls, is the light that is coming to those that have the pure character. Now, if this is offering light to the whole earth. Is this offering light for our time? Yes. So what is, as I've considered this, as I have been led to consider this, we have those that are looking from the most holy place and they are looking to the holy place and they are looking to the courtyard because do these all not represent the entire earth at this time? Amen. So, we see that there are those that will understand and give light to those that are seeking to understand that are being represented by those that are both in the holy place and in the courtyard. So if the anointed ones standing by the Lord of the whole earth are the holy beings surrounding his throne through which the Lord keeps up a constant communication with the inhabitants of the earth, are these not the angels that are bringing to us today the understanding that we need to be able to more properly develop the message that we are to be giving. Now, the comment in the chat regarding Daniel 11.33, they that understand shall instruct many. Is Zechariah 4 in agreement then with Leviticus 26 and 25 and Daniel 11. I believe all the prophets are in concord. They're all hearing from God and they're expressing his views. Okay. If God is providing us with the oil for these lamps, that they shall not flicker and go out, are we then to question 
when we are being presented with difficulties? Or are we to praise God that we are being tested? For who is it that is tested? Who is it that is those tested? Are, those that God loves. Exactly. Brothers and sisters, we have all been being tested. We have all been being challenged. How many of us have praised God for the evidence of his love? As Sister White continued, God is dishonored when we do not receive the communications which he sends us. Thus, we refuse the golden oil which he would pour into our souls to be communicated to those in darkness. My challenge for us each today, this golden oil can only be poured into a purified vessel. If we are going to choose to refuse the golden oil, we are saying that God doesn't know what he's doing. Is that the message you wish to give to our Heavenly Father, to our Creator, to our Savior? When the call shall come, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Those who have not received the holy oil, who have not cherished the grace of Christ in their hearts, will find like the foolish virgins that they are not ready to meet their Lord. They have not in themselves the power to obtain the oil, and their lives are wrecked. But if God's Holy Spirit is asked for, if we plead, as did Moses, show me thy glory, the love of God will be shed abroad in our hearts. Through the golden pipes, the golden oil will be communicated to us, not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. By receiving the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness, God's children shine as lights of the world. Is it your goal today to be recognized as one of God's children? Be careful. Take heed. You are to let God in. Where else do we find God requesting to be let in? The message to what church do we find God requesting to be let in? Hold, I stand at the door and knock. That's the Laodicean message. Are we to act as did the Laodiceans, or are we to be ready to receive him? We need to be ready. Now, if... We are to be ready. What are we to do? What is the counsel to the church of Laodicea? We need to buy from him. If we read Revelation 3.18... 
I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Can we see three steps in Revelation 3.18? Amen. Do we now see a fourth step when in Revelation 3.20, we are told, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Well, I think the fourth step is being willing to receive the chastening, the scourging that's promised in Revelation 3.19. And then we're ready to receive Christ. Yes, to tame us first. Yet, in this in this kind of a situation, in this symbolism that's being presented, is standing at the door and knocking another symbol of justification? For don't Amen. we have, don't we have to open the door of our hearts before we can receive? any of the chastening that is to occur? The Lord's people are to be one. There is to be no separation in his work. Too much time and means is being absorbed in a work that is being carried forward too earnestly in one direction. The Lord has not appointed this. He sent out the 12 apostles and afterward he sent out the 70 to preach the word to the people. The news of the kingdom of God was preached and power was given to them to heal the sick and cast out the devils because their work was done in the name of Jesus. The two influences must not be separated. God's commandment keeping people must be one. Satan will invent every device to break up and separate those whom God is seeking to make one. But the Lord will reveal himself as a God of judgment. We are at this time working under the eyes of the heavenly host. There is a watcher in our midst inspecting all that is planned and carried on. We may go all over the world full of the talk of the word and yet keep Christ out of the heart. How can we be filled with the Holy Spirit if we are keeping Christ out of the heart? Can that be done? No. No. No, sir. The truth is kept in the outer court, and Christ meets us with the word, Friend, how camest thou in hither without the wedding garment? What is the symbol of the wedding garment? What does this mean to us? Christ's character. Christ's likeness. Christ's character, right? Right. Amen. The voice may even utter the highest oracles of God's word, yet the men may not have put on the wedding garment. They are building on a sandy foundation. Hearers of the word, they come to the banquet, but they have not put on the robe of Christ's righteousness. The work of the Holy Spirit is to them a strange work. They are not doers of the word. The living oracles are not their guide and directory. Film computer 
Excuse me. Where else are is the term a strange work to be applied? Well, it's referring to God's strange work when, when he destroys the wicked. So we have here those that reject the work of the Holy Spirit because that work for these that have come to the banquet but do not wish to accept the robe of Christ's righteousness they are saying that the Holy Spirit's work is a strange work. We all need to study as never before the parable of the ten virgins. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. This is the holy oil represented in Zechariah. Here again, Zechariah 4, 11 to 14. This representation is of the highest consequence to those who claim to know the truth. But if we do not practice the truth, <coughs> We have not received the holy oil, which the two golden pipes empty out of themselves. The oil is received into vessels prepared for the oil. It is the Holy Spirit in the heart which works by love and purifies the soul. God's making the effort so that his people will be one. Those that seek to cast out other brothers and sisters, are they working according to that of the Holy Spirit? Not at all. No. Uh, Agreed. We must have greater confidence and earnestness in practicing as thus saith the Lord. We are not to listen to any voice that will benumb our senses in regard to the white garment of character that we must put on. There is to be no party spirit. We are to be united with God and with one another. Then the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Many times I have had people asking, why isn't this happening now this one paragraph says to us more completely and more directly that if we're not willing to practice and accept thus saith the lord if we are not willing to come into unity then we are not united with god because we are not united with one another Now, <clears throat> while there is yet a little time, if there are questions, I would like to take some time to answer your questions. Do we all understand what we've what we've been covering here today? Yeah, I'm having a question. Yes. Okay, Ali, I'm asking when when will the golden oil of the of the Lord 
stop to be pouring or to be put into our vessels? When will it, when will it stop? Well, <clears throat> can, the, can the Holy Spirit abide in any vessel that has a spot or a wrinkle? No. Then if that vessel has a spot or a wrinkle, is that God's fault? No, it isn't. So to whom is this being directed? Is it directed to the person that has chosen to retain sin in their lives? Or is this being directed at God? It's more daily to their person. It's more to the person is right. Because here again, if we do not practice the truth, we have not received the holy oil. It's up to us as to what we're willing to do. It is up to us as to what we are willing to accept. Any other questions? <clears throat> now I'll ask this. Does that answer your question, brother? A bit. Okay. What I was well, what okay, what like to clarify? What to be the real closure that at this time there is no like the Holy Spirit will be will be withdrawn from the earth. Whoever will be left won't receive it like that's my direct question okay if i if i understand you correctly i would have to say that the holy spirit is currently being poured out on hearts all around us but there are some that are willing to receive and there are some that are not Now in the chat, the question is asked, two olive trees, two pipes, two anointed ones, do they apply to the same application? We have two olive trees that stand one to the right, one to the left. We have considered these as being the two covering cherubs the Old Testament and the New Testament we have considered these as being the conduits for the golden oil the conduits for the Holy Spirit these pipes come into the golden bowls. The golden bowls represent those that are pure of character. Because how do you wind up with pure gold? Is it not passed through the fire? refined and how do you refine gold <clears throat> fire and when the gold is in the fire how do you know that it is refined uh, it's uh, transparent one thing doesn't the refiner see his visage his face in the gold yeah, like a mirror. Exactly. <laughs> now, 
Now, comment from the chat in Proverbs, the Lord said he will guide us when we turn left or right preaching and healing ministries. And yes, I do agree with the other point that is made here. The Holy Spirit is coming upon us in a form of the message. We cannot give a message until we are prepared to give that message. All right. Any other thoughts or comments at this time? Well, in, in my sermon, I'm going to address some of these points. Okay. So, because a lot of this ties in with what my sermon is about and what we talked about last night. Okay. So, <clears throat> shall we then prepare so that our hearts are ready to receive the message that is soon to be given. Okay, shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we ask now for your guidance and your direction. We thank you for this time that we've been able to spend in study. We thank you for the many blessings that you are giving us. Direct us now. Show us that where we need to be improved so that we may be purified and ready for the outpouring of your spirit. Help us now. Direct us in all that you would have us to do. We pray, Father, that you'll be with Brother Theodore as he gives this message. We pray that you'll anoint his lips with the coal from off the altar, that you will help us to understand that our minds are ready and our spirits are willing to understand that which you would have us to know at this time. I thank you for the many questions that were asked, for the participation, and for the blessing that these questions have become. Help us now and guide us for this we ask, for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.